What would it take for the Pacers to win a title from where they are right now, from the Stars to lottery picks to wings? Andy Sweeney from 107.5 The Fans. The Morning Show is going to break it all down with me today on the Locked On Pacers podcast. You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, y'all? Happy Friday. Congrats. You made it through the week and welcome into another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers, as always. My name is Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and SI. And today, fun episode recommended by somebody, I think, in a YouTube comment that I wanted to dive into what it would take for the Pacers from where they are right now to get to a title contender or even a title winning team. Is it possible with the core they have right now or what else do they need, whether it's a third terrific player, whether it's a cent from their current stars, whether it's lottery picks, whether it's wings. We get into the specifics of all that today. And joining me to do it, first time guest, really happy to have him on uh, from 107.5 The Fans of the Morning Show. It's Andy Sweeney from um, The Morning Show. I already said what it's called with Kevin Bowen. We get into all that stuff. A lot of talk about Tyrese Halbert and Jairus Walker, Benedict Matherin, and wing-sized forwards. We'll get to it all today. Let's just jump right in. A new guest here. He calls himself a local radio gas bag. I think he's wonderful in my many conversations with him. On The Morning Show on 107.5 The Fan, Louisville's finest export. I said the city name wrong, Andy. Don't get mad at me. It's Andy Sweeney of The Morning Show on 107.5 The Fan here to talk Pacers and their path to a title in their current core. Andy do you feel do you feel like an indie resident yet? I know you've been here for a while now, but you know it yeah. takes a while to adjust like that. Yeah, it it does. It's funny. It's like you know when like you know even with like the Pacers or a team, it's like it clicks. You know when like it clicks and it's like oh you know everyone's you know uh, the team's playing together and the defense is working and the offense is working. I would say a few months ago it finally clicked where I didn't feel like oh I'm here on a long business trip or I'm a <laughs> visitor of some kind and so. Me and my wife have actually been here. It's a little bit more than a year now. It's like a year wow. and a week or a year and two weeks or something like that. So uh, it's been an interesting ride. It's been a fun ride, but I, I really enjoy Indianapolis. Yeah, I've got to got to got to do. I would say, you know, we just we, we moved here and had a baby, basically. So it's I've been a little limited on things uh, we've been able to do, but I uh, have been able to get out in the city and really enjoyed it for sure. Have you, what's the best thing here that's not in Louisville? I got to write that time. Oh goodness! Um, oh, boy. Besides that's NBA good. basketball, obviously. Well, I, I was I was going to say the the sports scene is so different. Yeah, you know, the sports scene there is predicated a thousand percent on on college sports, um, and then obviously the Derby in here. You have the Indy Five Hundred, and those two have similarities. You know, they're not the same, obviously, but they have similarities. I, I would say. For sure, the the sports scene uh, is totally different, and the traffic. The traffic and the sports scene are two things that are probably a little bit different, for sure. Ch Churchill Downs, top five sports experience. If you haven't done it and you're listening to this, go. Oh, it's um, awesome. It's it awesome. Is, you can go on a day that's like crap. The baby horses, I forget what they're called. It's like crappier races. It's still a blast. Okay, the yep. Pacers, <laughs> speaking of blasts, uh, conference finals last year, which – it is ahead of what they, you know, have talked about their timeline being, but that is the time to have this conversation that we're not having, which someone suggested me as a topic. And I thought was a good podcast of what would it take from getting from where they are right now with the team that they have to being a team that could win or would win, whatever an NBA championship. And they've never done right. They made the finals before, but they've never won yep. the thing. And they have lots of like bit pieces, like bits of pieces that I could say that could be, the right thing that could be the right thing or it could not be so clarity is like a boring answer i don't want to say clarity but open-ended to you first biggest picture what would you think they need or don't need to get from where they are now to that point yeah you know I, i've been thinking about this uh and i know we'll dive into you know them paying seemingly everyone you know from from that run you know th that they could I, I think for me you know we had you know me me and bowen had carlisle on obviously with carlisle every all week year. Yeah, and, and, you know, right after the season, you know, you get swept by Boston. And right after the season, I, you know, I, I thought he's pretty honest with all of his conversations. You know, he's like, you know, now we need to find out. I'm paraphrasing, of course. We need to find out, like, like the next star, if you will. And not to make it – I know the NBA for 
many years, Tony, you know this better than I, was kind of obsessed with you got to have three stars. And that probably started with the big three, right? I mean, right. it did, but it kind of did this new, this new um, generation of the big three when you had LeBron, Wade, and Bosch go to Miami. And, I, you know, I don't – part of me is like, can they do that, right? Like, part of me is like, can they – actually do that they now have contracts that are not only filling up their cap space their contracts that are also the you know the other side is they're tradable contracts you know as you i'm sure talk with your viewers and listeners a lot the nba you can't trade me for a guy making 25 million dollars right yeah you, you can't do that right. in the nba you got to make these contracts line up and so for me i think it's what does that mean when Rick Carlisle in the, says that, that means the Pacers are thinking that. Well, what does that mean? And, and of course, that goes to, well, it's the development of a guy like Benedict Mather, and it's the development of a guy like Jairus Walker. And I'm using those guys because there is still their youth, their contracts are good contracts, uh, you know, not, not huge, you know, $20, $30 million plus a year contracts. And so it's like, can you get those guys on the cheap for a year or two? Then they then they're stars, and then you're paying them more money. So it's to me, what do they mean when they say we want to go out, stay aggressive, and find potentially another star? And that goes to you know, I mean, a conversation that we had so much last year. We had it with you on the radio, and I know you had it here. Uh, and that is, what does that mean? Is that a Mather and Walker thing? And I, I think finding out what that means uh, and seeing if they can do something with that is probably the step that Pacer fans or I don't know, maybe that's changed with Halliburton and then Siakam. You know, do they believe that that can happen? Do they believe right. that you can go get a free agent? Uh, or is it going to have to be what you did with Tyrese and Siakam, and that's you trade for them, you convince them, hey, this is an awesome place to be, and we got a good team, we got a good young team, and then you're able to sign them to a big contract. So I know it's the easiest, most cop-out thing for me to say, but what do they mean in, in the next 12 months, 18 months? What does that mean? Uh, because I have serious reservations that the young guys they have on this roster are the kind of superstar guys that Rick Carlisle was talking about when he came on with us. So you just brought up, for Inside Baseball, I did not prep Andy on the specific things I wanted to talk about. And yet he still got my top two points to a T just now. And I think what you just said splits up into two sex for me. And I want to do the stars they currently have first, right? Which is, it, it are their current stars enough or do they need these young guys to be more, right? Because the team that just won the championship, the Celtics, have a bunch of them, right? Like sure. their whole starting fives made all-star teams before, except for Derek White, who was like sniffing that this year. And he's obviously a star in a different way. Like he's the Rick Carlisle star that he talks about with you guys where he – Brings up Ben Shepard when talking Absolutely. about Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Derek White's that kind of player, right? So, like, that team is, it was, is loaded. And that's going to be really hard to build now in the new CBA, but they built a lot of it before. So, they they have up and down stars. But recently, since kind of the, the KD Warriors dissolved, the top talents on these championship teams were Jokic Murray, right? So, a stud and then like a fringy all star, but all star for sure. The year before that with Golden State, Steph, incredible. Draymond, all star at the time that level of player, right? The Raptors before that with Lowry and yep. Kawhi, right? The Bucks uh, with Giannis and Middleton and a lot of other good players, right? Drew being on that team. So a cut, like, do the, does Halliburton, Siakam, can they reach those kind of duos? Not, ignore the Celtics because they're, they're different. They could win three in a row, right? And that make, maybe yeah. is part of this discussion too, but are they that or do they need like a third thing that get, or, or, or even somebody better than one of those guys to reach that echelon? I think that's the biggest question, right? And Halliburton had lots of awesome playoff games. He also it felt like at the start of every series, we were like, uh, what? <laughs> you know, what did he just do? I am very high on Tyrese Halliburton, and I, I, I don't ha need as much clarity with him, but in terms of Siakam or the second thing or the, even the third thing, right, whether that's, you know, Andrew Wiggins being incredible for Golden State that year or Michael Porter being incredible or Aaron Gordon, for that matter, with Denver, I'm rambling about, guys that I just like talking about now, but you know, they need that thing, right? With the top end talent, I I'm kind of convinced they're close there, but not totally convinced. And that's the most important thing, because if that part isn't enough that then you would have no chance basically. Yeah. I, I will say this. I think it's an okay thing for us to question. 
I think with everything they have said and the courtship through the trade and then right after the season, again, I go back to Rick Carlisle, you know, and that you remember that you were at that, that press conference after the season. And when he came on with KB and I on the fan, it was, I got to get out here and I got to court uh, Pascal Siakam. Yep. I mean, if you remember that, and we're all sitting there saying, dude, you guys are going to get him. You're going to offer him. <laughs> you're you're going to offer him the money. He's got to like playing here. You know, he's rejuvenated from what he's been through the, those last year or two, whatever it was in Toronto. So I, listen, I'm with you. I, I actually, there is a huge part of me that is like, do they need someone who, I, I don't want to say better than Siakam, but you know what I'm saying? Do they need someone who close might, to that level? Yeah, 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 close to that level. I, and I struggle with it. I, I, a huge part of me feels like that is the case. I, I think the thing you bring up that is the most important thing is is, is Halliburton. Is, and we all love Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, I mean, how could you not? I mean, he is the catalyst in getting this engine started. I don't even mean a game. I mean building a team. You know, you want him with Team USA and that experience. Why? Well, when these guys become a free agent, you want him to say, well, what? you know, I, I know Tyrese, right? And if right. you're a big-time scorer, you want to say, you know, Tyrese Halliburton will get you the ball. You don't need to worry about that. But the inconsistencies, I think the number one thing I look for this season is for him to kind of iron out those inconsistencies. Yeah. I don't know if me and guys like me and you, do people iron anymore? <laughs> Are people ironing their polo shirts anymore? I don't know if Dustin wants me to say this. <laughs> Dust, Dustin Dopirak is an ironer. <laughs> Yes. I can see Dustin DePierac being an ironer. Yeah, we were on the that. road in Vegas, and and we had like it w- this was for the in season tournament, and we didn't know how long it'd be there, so there were like hotel switches and stuff. And I had an iron, and he didn't one day, and I oh he, wow, he, he, he had to come iron. Um, yeah, and I to be clear, I would say I'm more confident than not that Tyrus Halberton can be the best player on like this level of team. Oh sure, but certainly the consistency part is a huge factor in it, right? And he even said it after these games, like I got to figure it out. Yes. Yes, yeah, but yeah, it can't it can't be you know you know next year this team makes the playoffs, uh, and it can't be and I mean the real playoffs, not the play and stuff. Okay? Right, right. Uh, you know they make the playoffs, and it can't be where we're doing you're doing these shows and I'm doing my shows on. Well, you know, Halliburton didn't show up. Six shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he only took seven shots in the game, and he didn't take a shot in the fourth. You know, it it, it can't be that stuff. So right. you know, for for me, I think on the top end. Those two guys are, are are enough. Now, again, we go back to what Rick Carlisle and the Pacers have said. Do they think when they say third star, you know, they can go out and draft and develop a really good player? I mean, they have proven that. There's guys all over the roster. You know, there's guys all over the roster that have turned into good players making, you know, 10 plus million dollars now per year in the NBA. Um so I, I don't think they necessarily got to go out and get the next big star, a guy who's a top 15, 20, 20 you know, maybe even 25 player in the league. Now, that'd be nice if they say, hey, you know, we could, you know, and I'm trying to think of who would fit that mold. That would be great. But for me, you know, seeing these guys play together, getting that offseason, uh, getting that training camp, obviously, is going to be vital. And then, you know, ironing out Tyrese's game to where there aren't those lapses, especially in the postseason, where we got to wonder if he's going to show up. I, I think I think if you do that, that'll take so much angst away from you when you get to postseason time. And to be clear about, I think, what you're saying, I'm kind of speaking for you here, but, like, if those two are enough, that is be also because the rest of the roster is still really good. Like, the oh, rest sure. of those Raptors, Nuggets, Warriors teams were, like, every player was valuable, right? Whereas, like, then – Obviously, the Celtics bench was good this year, but like their seventh and eighth guys didn't didn't matter, right? Like, no, they didn't. Well, I mean, think think about this. Think about this too. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but you know, if you're going to, I, I think those are two flaw. You know, those are. It, it's almost like a coach who has a bunch of good play. You know, has they take over a team and they're like, okay, you know, your football team, we're going to be good at running the ball because the last coach they went out and they got a lot of guys to run the ball. So if I go out and I'm going to start throwing the ball to the team that ran the ball 40 times a game, I might, you know. I might get my face pushed in, you know, right. qu- quite a bit. So you got you, you got to adapt. I, the Pacers were good and made the Eastern Conference Finals, having a team that was built quite literally, in my opinion, different than what we saw with 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 the Celtics. The Celtics reminded you a lot of of those Heat teams, did they not? That they were so front loaded, everything was front loaded. That the bench guys that came in, you're like, 
Like, they're all right. You know, they're fine players, but they're filling the role of we are a fine player that also doesn't cost a lot of money. That, that, that's yes. kind of how they, they, they are. The Pacers now, especially after this offseason, are the opposite, are they not? Yes, they have a couple guys making a ton of money, but then they have other guys. And I know in the NBA, when I say 10, 12 mil, I still think that's a lot. That's not a lot. You know, it's a team-friendly deal a lot of times. You know, they're spread out to where they go – they go eight, nine, ten deep, and you're like, oh, yeah, the ninth guy should come in, and if he played in the fourth quarter, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Where other right. teams, you know, the Celtics, they, they they would be crazy. So it's all about how they want to build a team. If you go, you know, the Pacers, are they're ever thinking of adding someone who is considered a star in the league, that would flip totally the way that they have built this team over the last couple of years. And there's just a big part of me, Tony, that doesn't think they want to do that. They I mean, Don't you think Rick Carr likes the guys that he's brought in and helped I think develop? everybody in yeah. the whole building likes the guys yeah. in each other. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, it was a thing for the Celtics, even the Pacers series. It was like, Xavier Tillman's playing? O'Shea Brissett is playing? Like, that never <laughs> happened for the Pacers. They're top 10 guys when they were out there. You're like, yeah, okay. These guys right. are good. They're the best scoring bench in the regular season and the playoffs. It's just different, which is fine. Like, Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser were great sixth and seventh guys. Yep. They have a championship. They don't have to apologize. They were awesome. Everybody, quick little break. We got to talk about the lovely folks over at FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel because they're America's number one sports book. Well, guess what? We got something a little different for you because right now through September 22nd, about nine more days, all FanDuel customers can bet $5. If they do that, three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. How about that? That's with a YouTube TV base plan. You'll be able to watch every single Sunday afternoon at a market game. You just need a Google account, current form of payment. You can cancel anytime. $5 bet, three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket. If that's not enough, be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all of Sunday, the 15th, coming up very soon. Pre-game money line bets. Profit Boost will be starting on the 12th, you view your account page. That's how you learn more about that boost. So uh, uh, NFL Sunday ticket, private boost this weekend. Just visit FanDuel.com, download America's number one sportsbook, and check it all out today. Uh, so the other split part of what you opened with, which was like perfect. I, I, I That was unbelievable. Thanks. Was We're if, in <laughs> sync. We're in if sync. It is gonna that? Be, yeah. If it is going to be third star, they have lots of young guys, which is part of why running it back made sense. For them, even if fans are like, oh, same team, which is stupid to me. They were really good last year. People should be excited about that. It is like they have a lot of younger players or lesser experienced players on their team. But specifically for me, when I with this, the point that I would make if they're going to become a title team would be clarity with specifically their lottery picks from the last two years. Yeah. Jess Walker and Ben Matherin, right? Are they either, oh, wow, this guy's a starter, really good. This could be the better, maybe even better than this, but who knows? But just, you're Aaron Gordon, Andrew Wiggins, Marcus Saul, whoever, third awesome, sweet, we got it player. Or is it this? Okay, they're not that, but they have potential. They need to be traded for that thing. That clarity will come, has to, because of their finances and contending timeline, probably in the next two years at most. Probably less than that, honestly. Yeah. So that that is the other thing. I don't mean that it has to be them, but they will be involved in getting you know something else if they're if it's not them so i just said lottery pick clarity generically on this little side of the graphic because it's either or right it, and that's fine to have that optionality but that is to your point about growing a third star getting a third star even if it's a star in their role kind of deal it, it will probably come because of one of those two guys either with the pacers or because someone else is brought in with them. i i think to me and I want to speak for you. To me, clarity on those two guys is number one in my book. If you said, Andy, what is, you know, going into this season, um, you know, besides just straight winning and losing, right? You know, besides, yeah. you know, being able to. That's I mean, every team, right? Yeah, that's, that's, every team. That, yeah. that's every team. I mean, there are, you know, the expectation that they're not fighting to get into the real playoffs and not having to fight to not be in the play in and. You know, uh, you know, if you want to say, you know, you want to be, you want to have a better record than certain teams that you could throw up there, and you, you would have maybe different ones than I. Besides that stuff, clarity on those guys, man, I, I am an impatient person, and this is a th this this exercise of Jarris Walker is really, really, you need to have patience, is what we're being told in a lot of ways right. now. 
What I think, I'll get back to Jarrett's here in a second. What I find to be interesting besides the, hey, we need a, a, a third star or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever moniker you want to use there is, again, end of the year press conference when Rick Carlisle also came on with us, you know, they challenged Benedict Matherin a lot at the end of the season. And, you know, I think they're, they have used internally, and you may disagree with this, please help me, you're more the insider here, is, you know, they have used that Eastern Conference run as validation that they have a good team, that it's not that they don't, you know, not need Benedict Matherin, but it's also, hey, hey man, we've had some success here without you. And that to me, and them being very vocal about that. So when I started here, you know, a year plus, you know, we're talking about the Pacers. It was about Matt. A lot was about Matherin. Tons. You know, me and KB are talking, and, and that Tons. was the number one story. It's got to be Matherin. Yeah. And, you know, is he a starter? Yes, he is a starter. You know, that was a big conversation. It is frustrating that there's a part of that, that that's the conversation yet again this year, that it doesn't feel like we move the ball too far down the corner of the field in that conversation. So uh, clarity on Matherin specifically this season, I think is so key. I, 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 I really do. And then, you know, we even mentioned it a little bit this morning on the show, you know, Jairus Walker, it's not a, the conversation I don't feel like around him is how much is he going to play? I feel like the conversation is, yeah. is he, is he going yeah. to, yeah. Is yeah. he going to play? Agreed. Um, I mean, I really liked him in college. I thought that was a steal. And, you know, it's one of those things that if those guys don't work out for you, and you mentioned the trade, and that's a conversation we can have, as good as the Pacers have done in the draft, later in the draft, finding guys in the creases that have become really good uh, NBA players, then paying some of those, those, those talents, it would be kind of a swing and miss in the lottery. And you also can't do that either, right? And, and so, like, that's the other part. You got to be able, you know, if you're an NFL team, you got to be able to get some fifth rounders to make your roster. But the first and second rounders better be really good too. Uh, yeah. and, and you know, for Colts fans, Chris Ballard has ran into that a couple times, definitely <laughs> here, uh, in Indy. So I'm totally with you, man. Clarity on Matherin is number one, and then. You know, if Jairus Walker, I'm sorry, I know he's a young player, but if this season, you know, we get past Christmas and this is a guy who's not involved at all in what they're doing, that would worry me that 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 for the Pacer team, he might be a bust for what they're looking for him to do. It does happen where young guys get drafted to good teams and they just can't play. And that's sometimes bad. Like you put yourself in that situation as a team, but like. Ask Ushman Jang and Anthony Black and Jet Howard and Zaire yeah. Williams. I could, Anthony I could Black's play. a good one. That's a good right. one. I loved him coming out of college. I did too. Loved I, him. I really yeah. loved Anthony Black. Yeah. <laughs> like it just and they and they forced Black to play. Like they started him and then he'd come out and then he never played again. The whole half. He, like it's like this is stupid. We get what you're doing, you know. So th- that I think Jarris will play more this year because there's just less fluff. Like he jumped ahead of McDermott's gone, Buddy Heald's gone, Bruce Brown's gone. But he's still probably a guy number 11, I would say. So can he supplant someone else, right? And Matherin, you're right. It is pretty similar to the same discussion as last year. And I'm let me be clear. I don't want anyone to, to say I'm saying <laughs> I'm doing something I'm not. I'm not comparing Benedict Matherin to Tyler Hero. I'm not doing that. What I am doing is I just heard Zach Lowe and Kevin Pelton have a conversation where they talked about Tyler Hero, this ascending great player with the Miami Heat, who was really good in the bubble, and Jack Carlos making songs about this guy. And wow, he's really great. And then the Heat make the finals, and Tyler Hero misses the entire playoffs. And all of a sudden, I was like, how much is he really helping the Heat? And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, his contract's bad. Like, he's not, you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm not comparing the players, but that path happened where it was like, wow, this guy's really young and good, and he's a good scorer. And then they had a really good run without him, and the Pacers had a really good run without Mather, and now the conversation around that player has totally shifted. And so this is a big clarity year for Mather in a similar way. Thankfully, unlike Tyler Hero, they have not picked – paid him a contract yet from a Pacers perspective, thankfully not from a Matherin perspective. So this is a big year for him and it's similar to last year, but the difference is there's expectations now where last year it was more about bridging that development between the young guys and the team winning. And that's what makes this year so much more interesting with the clarity is that last year they, you, I don't know if they were conflicting goals cause they were good and young anyway, but there was like some discovery and development stuff going on. And so right. this year, no, this year it's all, 
winning. Winning is the thing. So how how do you the, – the ropes have to be short if they stink, but you have to find out at the same time, right? So the Christmas maybe is a good cutoff. Trade deadline is a good cutoff. Whatever. They 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 need to set their own dates for that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of Christmas, you know, if you remember Christmas going into New Year's when they made the big change last yes, year. Yes, and they were awesome so, for yeah, like two and weeks. They, yeah, and they went to – I mean, they – I'm, I'm forgetting. I know they went to Nemhard, you know, more obviously. Jalen Smith started, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, so they made some, they made some big moves and it was kind of one of those things that Merry Christmas. Hey, you're going to the bench or Merry Christmas. I have my Christmas <laughs> cup, dude. I'm ready. <laughs> there I got you go. it. Oh goodness. We can't start talking about Christmas already. Uh, <laughs> although I'll have a, you know, one, uh, a 15, 16 month old there. So what do you get them for Christmas? I, I think with Matherin, there was some padding last year of, hey, there are expectations, but you're still in this development phase or whatever. I feel like it's unfortunate for him. I feel like a lot of that is gone this year. Don't you? Yep, I agree. I, mean, I, I feel like that there Especially is Especially going- because the starting spot at his position has been like, this yeah. guy's good, and we paid him, right? Like, yeah. that is and we, and we the open for thing now. Yeah, it, it, it's spot on. So, it is – you know, they're going to have to balance the, hey, we got to win with, hey, we need to see if some of these guys can play. And then mixed into all of that are guys who can play and that you have paid, right? I mean, right. when you think of Obi Top, but not that Obi Top and Jarris Walker are the same. You know, they're, they're, they're not the same player. But, you know, that has very much been the conversation. I'll go back to Jarris for a second. I wonder, and Tony, you, you, you might know the answer to this, okay? Why, you know, watching Summer League. Yep. How many, how many players in summer league were probably watched and or micromanaged as much as Jarris Walker? Yeah. I, like you, you know how it is. Some guys, some guys play summer league and they play a game or two, and that's enough. Some guys are playing summer league and they have no chance in hell to make the roster. Some guys <laughs> are playing summer league because they're. You know, because they're uh, because they're young players. Some guys play like a Zach Eady gets injured early. You never see him again. He didn't need, need summer league. But Jarris Walker, it felt like that mattered more. And it felt like when he was playing, like if I made an all, uh, like a starting five of summer league where it like actually mattered what they did, he would be on it. He would absolutely uh, be on it, especially when you're GM and your coach and everybody else sitting courtside, right? Assistant coach are all sitting courtside ready for it. So I did find that interesting. Like out of all the players, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was, it, it's not like a rookie. Okay. He's here. He's going to play a little summer league like Zachy. You know, Zachy is going to play for Memphis. Whether he starts, whether he comes off the bench, like, you know, he's going to play. He's going to be there in the rotation and a big part of that rotation. I keep using Zach Eady, but with Jarris Walker, it's like, no, it mattered. When he turned the ball over, people are like, yo, man, why are you turning the ball over? He got beat on defense. It's like, yo, why are you getting beat on defense? You can't do that on a Tuesday night against the Sixers. That sort of thing. And not many guys probably went into Summer League, Vegas, and Utah doing that, needing that. Yeah, and, and the list of guys that is, is in a similar spot, like Jed Howard, or like first-round picks from last year trying to establish themselves in some way, right? That would be the rest of the list. Noah Clowney, although, again, a lot of these guys are picked yeah, later. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Right? So that 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 is why it's it's different. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's got to be something you'd like to learn, or you're an adult, you know, you're when you were a kid, you were always learning and growing, but we lose that curiosity when we grow up. What is something you might like to learn, like gardening? or a new language, or a new game, or how to beat your best friends in certain activities like bowling. Therapy can help you reconnect with that sense of honor because your back-to-school era can come at any age. Therapy can also help with things like setting boundaries, empowering you to be the best version of yourself, learning positive coping skills. It is not just for people who have experienced major trauma. So if you've been thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. To get matched with a licensed therapist, you can switch at any time for no additional charge, rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockdownNBA. Uh, I want to go to a third thing on the path to title for the Pacers, if you don't mind. This is the yep. last one I would make. This is what the NBA is now. This will be a lot shorter of a point than the last two because they're way more critical. But... You just saw it with the Celtics. Like, their team 
even their guards are wings. Like they're an endless supply of wing players, basically, with a post. When the Nuggets won, KCP could play the wing. MPJ could play the wing. Aaron Gordon could play the wing. Christian Brown ascending on the wing was a big yeah. part of them winning a championship that year. The Raptors had size everywhere. That was their thing. Oh, look at all these arms. They're shrinking the floor. Oh, my gosh. Right? Wiggins, finally good. Wings are important. Do the Pacers have enough forward size dudes? And the answer to that is either is Ben. Can, can Ben Shepard become a good wing? He's already kind of good. We'll see. Right? Is Nismith tall enough? Do they need another guy? Is Obi Toppin enough? Like, that's why. And that kind of goes back to Jarris Walker, too. But, like, in terms of acquiring an external player, if all the internal stuff's nice, that's the last thing I would wonder. Do they have enough wings slash forward slash, as Rick Carlisle says when he talks about the trends of the NBA, skilled size? That would be the last thing I yeah. would wonder. You, you'll remember better than I, uh, and I should have looked this up. I mean, there was talk last year that they like Siakam and OG Ananobi, right? That is correct. Yeah, I mean – well, to me, that to me that tells a little bit of the story. And when you talk about wings, obviously you talk about the three and D, right? You know, I mean, whether Bridges or all these different players, three and D wings. To me, and maybe I'm wrong here, I because I just believe in their offense so much. Yeah. I just believe I just believe in it so much that so many guys could go there and excel in that offense. Uh, I mean, you might use Obi Toppin as an example there, but I feel like they could go get guys and put them in and, and, and they'd be good offensive players, or at least they would help make them that in that system. W when you go wing, I go, my mind immediately goes to defense a thousand percent. And, uh, and they've been preaching. Yeah. I mean, they've been preaching now for the better part of, you know, again, going back to November, December last year to the end of the year, they've been, They've been preaching defense, and even when they play bad in the playoffs, they're like, "Well, you know, I mean, you're missing shots." Like, no, it's all about defense. Um, to me, <laughs> the wings. I, I don't know if any of those guys can play defense. You know, I, at, at, we we're talking elite level. I love Siakam. What I think it, you he know, can to interrupt you, but continue. No, no, I, I th no, I think he absolutely can. Um, you know, Obi is an offensive player, right? Yeah. Is Jarris just an offensive player? I, I kind of thought he wasn't coming out of college, but the more you watch him, you're like, well, well, damn, his offense is head of his defense at this. So when you think of Obi and you think of Jairus, um, you think of those guys, and even Siakam, that might be unfair. You think of offense way before you think of defense. Great. And to me, and to me, they talk about getting better defensively. You, yes, you can do that, but you can only do that so much. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses in whatever line of work you're in. And those guys might only be able to be so good at defense. Do they feel like they need to go get a guy? The problem with that is that's like a quarterback in the NFL, Tony. And I know you don't follow the NFL too much, but you know, I, I know mean, that part. I do know everybody, that. Everybody wants to find one of those. Everybody right. wants one of those. And that's what the NBA is. Everyone wants the wing that can guard three, four positions, that can knock down a three, that can guard Tatum, that can guard Brown, that can guard, you know, all the different wings there uh, in the league in the Eastern Conference. That's the biggest question. How much they find out this season about that will be interesting. If Rick Carlisle's talking about that in October, November, I think you know your answer. That's what I would say. What I just heard you say is that the Pacers need Anthony Richardson. That is the interpretation. Ah, well, hey, he can reverse dunk it, can he? I mean, you know, you might have to be worried about some injuries. Plays, I believe he plays basketball every so often, not like – at a high right. Level. Oh, I yeah. Know, I don't know what level well, you call Remember, he had the cradle dunk. That was where? Was that in the IMG workout spot? I think it was where they yeah. showed that in Florida. Yeah, which is a pretty nice facility, I'm sure. Mo well, Ali Cox, what are you doing, man? Come on. Switch there you forward. go. Get on the there wing. You <laughs> uh, unless you have any major significant points to add to this, I think we covered the ground of what it would take. And, and I think, sorry, the, like a takeaway sentence I was have is it's not impossible that the current team has – the core to do it. I I don't think it will be. The NBA changes teams so much right. over a five year span, but it's like there's like a percent chance greater than zero, and so that's why this year of discovery and winning combined at the same time will be so endlessly fascinating for a franchise trying to get back to the finals for the first time in 25 years. Andy Sweeney, this was great. Uh, I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Where can people who don't know who you are find you and what you do? Talking about more than just the Pacers, all of Indiana's sports teams. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we're on the mornings. Me and Kevin Bowen, 7 to 10 a.m., 107.5 The Fan, 93.5 The Fan. Uh, download the app, check us out, stream us, YouTube, uh, and everything else. You can follow me on Twitter. They forced me to put articles up on the website where I give things such as fantasy football advice, even though I'm in five fantasy football leagues and currently in two and three in those fantasy football leagues. So take my advice, and I don't, I'm not sure how much it's worth. <laughs> I'll need it. I play fantasy football despite not really watch, watching well, football. It's very that's fun. Hard, but I actually – no one cares about this. I actually think it makes me better because I only see numbers on a screen. I, I, there's no hey, – that's- like, you know that's I mean? fun. I mean, that's what I do. Listen, I like Major League Baseball, but when no, you're on the when you're on the 14th round <laughs> and there's a shortstop for the the I use the Brewers, I'll use them as an example. Yeah, I don't know anything other than his numbers. Here's what he does. You know, here's his average. Here are the home runs. Here, here, whatever. So the Pacers. Last thing I'll say: the Pacers gonna be super interesting this year. Yep. Can they can they mix the success? with the growth and the maturation of the team? Can they figure out the things that we've talked about? Can they figure out if Tyrese is going to be uh, more consistent in those big moments, the young players? And then, you know, for for fans, there are going to be, and we've already seen this, you know, ESPN already put out their, their predictions. There are going to be a lot of people who believe what they did with Smoke and Mirrors last year. And it's important to remember you made the Eastern Conference Finals. It's important to remember as well on the other side of your brain that we didn't know if you were going to be in the playing situation to the final game of the year. <laughs> if you remember, I mean, right. it was, you know, we are the final, you know, night or two of the season before we knew if they were going to, you know, be top six. And so then, you know, you know, ESPN has them seventh right now. And so you're going to have to deal with people loving you, people hating you, figuring out the maturation of your roster all while having this demand from the fan base to go win and to back it up what you did last year while people probably don't buy into what you did last year on a national level. So it's going to be a fascinating team. If they can be good, they can, you know, kind of crap on everyone's parade like they did last year when they beat the Knicks and they beat Giannis. And that would be a lot of fun if they do. Yeah, they secured on the last day and didn't have – didn't control their destiny to make it until the third – the last game of the season, right? Like it was – Yeah, wow. Sweating wow. it out, right? And then yeah. the playoff bracket was – what perfect. Were. Perfect. For that them, was, right? Yeah, it was perfect for them. I mean, you wanted Milwaukee. That's who you wanted to play. Even healthy, I think they would have wanted Milwaukee, right? Like, a thousand percent. They were probably watching that Knicks. A thousand you remember percent. That Knicks Bulls went to yep. overtime. It went, went to overtime. All, like, yep. Yep. Game, yeah. Yeah, I was watching the game. It might have been an illegal stream, but I was watching that. You know, everyone was watching that. Actually, I think that was like an ESPN game, if I'm not what? mistaken. It was a nationally televised game because of what it meant. I've joked about this. Like, the Knicks had scenarios of like seeding. Right, that they maybe cared about. If you are a team that has that, you want to be on ESPN the last day because your game's gonna go a little longer. You can see what happens to the other games and then figure out what your scenarios are based on that. Absolutely. Result. Highly recommend tuning in to Andy and Kevin every single morning. Mark with the best songs that he tweets out every day because people ask about them so much. He goes deep into the bag. Yeah, oh yeah. It's good radio in the morning. Uh thank you everybody for tuning in today. We'll be back Monday talking with Alex Golden about fun topic. Pacers players we think are the most likely to still be on the team Ooh. three years from now. Okay. So contract stuff, skill stuff, and a lot of stuff, Andy, and I just talked about be relevant there. Everybody have a great weekend. See you very soon.